Are you a parent with a child or children who are active? A little football player, gymnast, or a little child genius? According to Florida law, these are considered extracurricular activities. In pursuit of the Florida law, the parents have to decide on how issues in terms of being involved, transport, and paying for these extracurricular activities are addressed by the parents. Very often in my practice, you run into an issue where you have two parents who may either want a child to be a part of a particular activity, but can't decide on how it's going to be paid. Or possibly you have two parents that want the child to be in two different activities. Or even the situation where you have parents who, although one wants the child in the activity, the activity occurs during the other parent's time. What do you do in these situations? Let's say we have a young man and the father wants him to be in football. But mother doesn't want him in football. Posse feels like it's too violent or she's just concerned about his well-being or what he's taught playing football. He wants him to be in something else. Possibly chess, basketball, or she doesn't want him in any activities at all. Wants him to completely focus on school. How does the court deal with this situation? Well, if you're familiar with my other videos, you'd realize that if two parties are married and they go through a dissolution, that the default is that both parents will have shared parental responsibility unless otherwise agreed upon or the court orders otherwise. This is the same if you have two parties who aren't married but have entered into a parenting plan. At some part of this parenting plan, you would have to deal with the concept of extracurricular activities. There are times where the parenting plan may state that both parents must mutually agree on the activity. It may say that each parent may enter the child into an activity of their choice. Or if you're not lucky, it won't say anything at all. The reason why the third one is the worst, because if a parenting plan is silent on an issue, no one has direction on what to do. See, at least if the parenting plan says both parties must mutually agree, you realize at least at some point there has to be a decision jointly by both parents. If you have the second option, you know you can have the child involved into one thing on your time so long as it doesn't affect the other parent's time. But not having a provision in your parenting plan means no one knows what to do. And that is a fast track to court. My first suggestion is to honestly and sincerely attempt to co-parent the issue. It is always best to try to work on the issue with the other parent. Courts absolutely hate trying to micromanage people's lives, and they absolutely hate having to make decisions for children that aren't theirs. And that's what you're essentially asking them to do. They don't know your child. They don't know if how good of a football player he is. They don't know how smart your child is. They only go off of what mom says, dad says, or whatever their lawyers can argue. But that's not always in the best interest of the child. In fact, most times it's not. You can have a situation where a parent has a great point, but a not so great lawyer. And a parent with a horrible point has an amazing lawyer. If that lawyer who's amazing is persuasive enough, that child's going to be in a program or the court's gonna make a decision that may not be inevitably in the best interest of the child. However, if you cannot make that decision amongst yourselves, you're gonna have to address it with the court. If you have a situation where it says that both parents must mutually agree 
and one parent on their own decides to put the child in a program and the other parent is not in agreement, that's a motion for contempt. I've covered that in my previous videos. What that means is there is a provision in the parenting plan or the agreement that's not being complied with. Your remedy in a motion for contempt situation is to compel them to comply with the agreement or to sanction them for not complying with the agreement. However, this still doesn't fix the issue of what program should the child or children be or not be in. If you're in the situation where you have shared decision making, but you cannot decide on the issue and no one has violated, you now have to request the court to decide. In my experience, these can be some of the more costly hearings to have because you are basically asking the court to make this decision and you have to provide proof of this decision. And both parents may be just as much right. And you are at the whim of the court. Let's say the court's a hardcore football fan and has no issue with the potential issues with concussions and CTE and all these things that you may hear about. Or you may have the opposite. You may have a court that's extra sensitive about those things. Your position is possibly lost or won without any further conversation. But you still have to go to court. You still have to possibly even hire a lawyer. You still have to spend the time and energy to get this done. It is not the most proficient way to co-parent. Now I'm gonna move on to transportation. Now, this is less concerning, especially amongst older children, because a lot of programs tend to have automatic transport. A lot of times parents realize, hey, the child's in the activity, we just need to get them there. But it still becomes an issue sometimes, especially for a parent who may not have as much time with the child, but that activity falls within their time. Transportation may be another issue because depending on where the activity is, it puts a major strain on either one or both parents' lives. This tends to be not as much of an issue because a lot of programs will automatically pick up the children from school or the parents have kind of considered the transportation aspect when deciding on what program the child is going to be in. But it can become an issue and it's something that should be addressed in your parenting plan. My suggestion also is when deciding what activities the child or children will be in, to think about those little details such as how they're going to get there, when they're going to get back, how that affect time with each parent, and other things such as that. The final part of this I'm going to discuss is the cost of the extracurricular activity. One thing that should be in your parenting plan is how the cost for these activities will be attributed to both parents. Depending on the situation, it can either be divided equally Sometimes it's divided pro rata based on each parent's income. Or sometimes one parent may pay the entire amount while the other one doesn't. The equal split tends to be the one I see happens when a lot of parents agree. And when both parents have mutual decision in the activity. And it makes sense. Both parents equally decide to put the child in the activity. Both parents should equally decide to pay for the activity. The pro rata tends to be the default pursuant to law as it relates to the division of extracurricular activities. Reason being is that's also the default in terms of how child support is calculated, as I've discussed in some of my previous videos. The idea is out of 100% of monies between each parent, one parent will make a certain percent of that 100% and so would the other. 
let's say one parent makes 6,000 and the other parent makes 4,000. Out of $10,000, the parent that makes 6,000 makes 60% of that amount and the other parent makes 40%. That will be how the extracurricular activity payments would be divided. Another way that it tends to happen is one parent pays for the entire thing and the other parent doesn't pay anything. That tends to happen when you have a situation where each parent can enroll the child in their own extracurricular activity. The theory behind it is pretty much, well, you want them to do it, you can go ahead and pay for it. I don't want them to do it, so I'm not going to pay for it. For me as an attorney, I can't suggest which one is better for your situation. It's really on a case by case basis. And depending on what you guys are trying to do and where you guys are trying to be as it relates to co-parenting, any one of those options can work for you. One thing that I'll reemphasize is that it is so important that these things are discussed. I suggest that these things are discussed prior to the original entry of the parenting plan, whether you guys agree or you're taking it to court, which means if you're being represented, you have to ask your lawyer that question. And if you're not being represented and you're going pro se, these are things you have to bring up. Unfortunately, sometimes parents forget to bring this up because they're so much more focused on the larger issue, whether it be the time sharing or the child support or just larger issues that something as simple as extracurriculars, unless the child's already in them, isn't something that comes up. So remember, when you're filling out your parenting plan or you're figuring out how you're gonna either settle the case or prepare your case for trial, remember this issue extracurricular activities, how you guys are going to decide it, how is transportation going to get dealt with, and how is it going to be paid. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you have any other family law questions, check out my YouTube channel, like and subscribe. I talk about a host of issues on my page. And if there's an issue that I don't have and that you would like answered, leave a comment below. My name is Mark Joseph. Thank you for watching.